if you're interested, it's called The 12 Steps of Self-Parenting by Philip, Philip Oliver Diaz and Patricia Gorman. It's a book that they use at, at the Adult Children of Alcoholic meetings. So it's, it's pretty neat. Okay, so just to give you an idea, and I know it's available on that thing called Amazon, so you can check that out if you want to. Okay, and anything else that we have going on at Starting Point? Somebody asked it earlier, and uh, we are open from 12 to 7 uh, during the week, and basically the counselors are still are bringing people in. We are hoping and praying that we can come up with a good positive plan for some of the groups to start coming back. And that probably right after Labor Day. So we're working on that now. As soon as we get a plan put together, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay. All right. I want to begin today. I, this is part of my meditation for this morning. And I really kind of fits right into it. God works in funny ways. I was reading my meditation this morning and they said, kind of fits into our talk for today. So here we go. It's from the Native American Indians meditation book, my favorite book. As within, as without, our present thought determines our future. Who want peace outside ourselves we must first have peace inside ourselves. It's not what is going on, but how we are looking at what's going on. We need to keep ourselves in balance. We must be careful not to get too hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. We must know the times, time to work, time to rest, time to play, time to sleep, Time to pray, time to lighten up, time to laugh, time to eat, time to exercise. There's a saying, the honor of one is the honor of all. That mean, this means when we work with all, we need to also work on one. We need to take care of ourselves. You cannot give away what you don't have. Great Spirit, let me walk in balance today. Remove from me resentment, self-pity, and self-saving motives. Let me love myself so I can learn to love my neighbors. I wanted to share that because we're going to talk a lot today about the word spirituality and spirit. Because one of the things I want to talk about in the concept of self-parenting is to be able to look at the foundation of what self-parenting is. So today's like an introduction to the steps. One of the things I realized in my own life, I look back on it, it took me a long time to get to understand what this word actually means. And they have to build what I refer to as a spiritual foundation. So unfortunately, so many times that so many of us don't truly understand it. I want to go back in time, though, for a couple of minutes, do a little bit of history. The founding of AA, if you go back and look at the founders of AA, okay, if you remember back in the beginning when the program got started, the founders put together this very beautiful, beautiful program. But they did it through trial and error. And if you remember, there's one gentleman, and he's my favorite of Dr. Bob and Bill W. My favorite person I have a prejudice towards him is Dr. Bob. Because Dr. Bob is the one person, a very spiritual man, who had a tendency to look at the program through a different set of eyes. And when Bill W. was kind of spearheading and putting it together, Bill W. was very much into trying to move it into the Oxford movement. And Dr. Bob brought balance to the program by saying, and reminded us, this is a spiritual program, not a religious program. The doors are open to everybody, everywhere, and every place. It is a program for all. And I always love that concept of Dr. Bob, because his spirit, and I don't know whether he understood it or not back then, but that process of the 12 steps that was put together and Dr. Bob saying that opened the door of these 12 steps to be used in all different areas of our life. The 12 steps fundamentally are 12 simple, basic, fundamental spiritual principles that teach us self-love, self-awareness, self-beauty, to look at ourselves in a positive and healthy way. And the founders, that's why I really believe the program was divinely inspired, the founders in putting it together set it up in kind of a special way. You will notice that the first 11 steps in the program are for us to work on ourselves. Having done our work or having what they call a spiritual awakening, then you carry the message to someone else. 
and also it says to practice these principles in all of our affairs in every aspect of our life. So over the years, the 12 steps have been taken and put into all different types of 12 step programs. And also we realize now that these are the steps that so many of us can use really in raising our children, in relationships, they're a beautiful concept of life. And one of the things that they've done, the Adult Children of Alcoholics group has done this, put together the 12 steps called self-parenting. So what I'm gonna be doing over the next uh, six weeks after today is taking you on a journey through the 12 steps of self-parenting to begin to understand how the steps work and understanding a process that's connected to self-parenting. One of my favorite books, and I love this little book. I picked it up from Hazleton years ago. It's called Stools and Bottles, the little green book. And I love that little book. But in the book, they talk about the three-legged stool. And basically what they're talking about in the book are the first three steps of the program. But I've taken that three-legged stool. I want to connect it to the concept of self-parenting. So there are three major personality traits we're going to look at in self-parenting. There is our inner child, one leg of the stool. There's referred to as the higher parent. I'll explain that in a minute. And then there is the higher power. So we connect all three together. The inner child, the higher parent, and the higher power. We put together the foundation and the basics to be able to understand the process of self-parenting. As most of us know from the series we did on codependency, our foundations are developed in us in the first seven to 10 years of our life. And so very many times, the little child inside of us never really had a voice. And so now we're gonna learn how to give that little child a voice through the steps. But then we have something called the higher parent. And the higher parent is us. We are the ones who are going to as a higher parent, we're the ones who are going to listen to that little child and help that little child to heal, make peace, go through forgiveness, and be able to move into a healthy state of life. That's also done with a connection to the higher power. So all three have to work together. It's like a process we have to go through. And I share that because I believe very deeply in the concept of spirituality. I'm going to kind of share this with you because it was shared with me a long time ago, and I want to go back to when I was 32 years old. And I know I know it was a long time ago. When I was 32 years old, I had a nervous breakdown. I was in a psychiatric hospital. A very fantastic doctor, whom I don't remember his name. I, all I remember is the one thing that he did. Came up to me and he said, and again, remember, I, I was a priest. I got ordained it when I was 26. I was a priest six years at the time. He came up to me and he said, he said, Vince, I hate to tell you this, but you're spiritually dead. And I didn't understand what he was talking about because to me, the word spiritual way back then was connected to religion. He said, no, because I, I said, what do you mean I'm spiritually dead? I'm a priest. You know, I belong to a religious faith. He said, no, listen to me. He defined the word spiritual and he said to me, your spirituality is your spirit. The concept of spirituality is to come to an awakening of your personal spirit. You come to a knowledge of who you are as a person. That's the reason why I did that reading today because it means going internally and getting to know the real you on the inside. See, our body is only a housing. It's a house our spirit has taken root in to take us on a journey of discovery, a journey of experiencing different things in our life. But our spirit, basically, and I say this over and over again because I believe this deeply, our spirit never dies. So we really and fundamentally will never die. Our body will get old. Our body will eventually in a period of time come to a point where your spirit may have to leave your body because it's time for it to move on. It's done its work. 
And so really in reality, what's happening is our spirit is really the gift of who we are as a person. And so real spirituality is getting in touch with the very beautiful and wonderful spirit that we have inside of ourselves. To do this, we have to learn what I call the principles of spirituality. And we'll cover these in the steps. The first principle are questions we have to ask ourselves. And these are what I call the basic questions when we go through this process we're talking about. We have to ask ourselves, do I love who I am? Do I have a personal relation with myself as a person? Not with the external, which is part of it, but do I have a relation with the real me? who I am as a person on the inside. Have I come to an acceptance? And to me, acceptance is a powerful spiritual word. Have I come to an acceptance of the reality of who I am? Am I at peace with it? Or am I always trying to be something or be something I'm not? And so I have to learn over and over again the value of my spirit. And so, yes, I'm the one who has to learn how to love me, to build a relationship with me as a person. And I, I love that concept. You know, I never thought I'd be saying this, that we, sh- we should take time to fall in love with ourselves. But love in a spiritual sense, not in a material sense. It's unfortunate in our society that the word love very many times has taken on a lot of other meanings. You know, the soap operas, the dime novels, stuff to this effect. We, many times we mix, mix up the word love and lust. But in reality, the word love is very powerful. It's an energy we all have deep down inside of ourselves. It's what makes us the unique individual that we are. And that love needs to be nurtured and developed. And so we have to ask ourselves over and over again, who am I? I call this the ultimate spiritual question of life. Who am I? Who am I on the journey of this earth? And unfortunately, myself included, for a lot of periods of time, I had a tendency to define who I was by what I did. And I realized now I did that because I was empty on the inside. I had a void inside of me. So it was very easy to have, a, have an image on the outside. You know, at the outside world, I was a priest. I had a profession. I even had an outfit that went with it. It was pretty neat, you know. And also, I had power that went with it. But everything was external. It wasn't internal. And I realized today that so many times, many of us have a tendency to kind of use the external to avoid the internal. I never truly understood that until I had to do it the hard way. And I'm no different than you. None of us just kind of come to an awareness of this overnight. There's a process to it. You know, now I am truly connected to, you know, I'm laughing about it today and I can smile about it today, but I went to my first 12 step meeting in 1969. It's a long time ago. It was Al-Anon. And the people at Al-Anon told me to work on me. And I told them I didn't need any work. I went there because I wanted them to teach me how to work on somebody else, my pastor at the time. But they were very persistent. They never gave me the formula. They just told me to do my own work. Then in the hospital, I was told the exact same thing. And it's amazing. It took me from 1969 to 1984 to finally have that message start to come home. It's amazing the stuff that we do to ourselves because I was so scared and so afraid of going inside and looking at the real me and getting to know the real me. I was afraid of change. I was afraid of moving in new directions. I was afraid of being able to listen to what was really going on in my life. So as a result, then I truly didn't love myself because I didn't know who I was either. And so we have to actually build this personal relationship with that little child that's inside of you. And that's where the higher adult comes into play. I've got to be able to do work on myself so I can help that little child to grow. But that little child, as I mentioned in the codependency series, is going to be your teacher. 
That little child is full of love, spontaneity. That little child will set us free. And so we have to learn how to do that in conjunction with our higher power, because we can't do it on our own. And we need each other, and we need a concept of growth to help us through this process. And so it's like an adventure. The other beautiful thing is we have to learn how to respect and honor ourselves as people. But it comes down to that old principle. It's very difficult for me to love another person if I don't love myself. I can't give away what I don't have. And unfortunately, many of us, myself, I should just speak about myself. For a long period of time, I was giving from an empty barrel, which meant I was draining myself dry. And literally, I was so bent on the outside that I was scared to look at the inside. And I'm grateful to that, a lot of gratitude for a lot of people who had the courage to come into my life the courage to even confront me and to help me to begin to open that door. I know I was scared, but see, you never admit that you're scared. You make believe you're not. But in reality, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to have feelings. It's okay to start the process. But see, again, I can't respect anybody else or really give something to somebody else if I don't have it inside of me. So, when we talk about spirituality, it's developing my inner spirit. But now, remember something, and these are some of the principles, and I, I look back on our recovery program, and the gifts were given in that program. For example, we were told certain things. If you go into the rooms of recovery, they have these things on the wall called slogans. You may have heard of them. And they're there for a purpose, and not just decoration. For example, one day at a time, Easy does it, two of my favorite slogans, because I'm finally learning something, that real growth, and we'll see this when we do the steps, real growth is a process that happens slowly, happens gradually, and happens with patience and with time. You know, it's amazing sometimes how we're in a rush to do everything. In codependence, we have this disease. I know it because I've got it. I want to figure this whole thing out. I want, I want to get to work on this. I want to do it right. Calm down. Relax. I did the reading today for a reason because it says in there, there's a time to do your work, a time to play, a time to rest, a time to eat, time to say hello to people. So it's a little bit of each that makes up a day. And so it's almost like building this mosaic but it's little pieces at a time. And so real growth is that process of realizing the fact I got it easy does it. Take my time, go slow. I'm going to tell you something, the slower the better. Of course, when you do things slowly, they stick with you. They stay connected to you. If you try to rush everything, it doesn't work. You know, my father, in all of his wisdom, used to say this to me all the time because he was a farmer. He said, if you really want to raise crops, you really want to have a good, a, a good production in your crops, you pray for the slow, steady rain. The cloudburst will drown them. This is good wisdom. And life is the exact same way. If I can just rediscover something what, a little bit at a time. So in self-parenting, what I'm doing is I'm going to listen. And here's the question we have to ask ourselves. Do we listen? Or are we we too busy having answers to everything? So we've got to take the time to let stuff come in. And that's why the steps are set up that way. They're set up so that we can actually go through this process of gradually and slowly going through a discovery process of who we are, what we are all about. It's about making settlement, working on things in life. But the biggest thing in the steps of self-parenting you're going to experience is the same principle they talk about in The Course in Miracles. It's that love overcomes fear. Love overcomes shame. Love overcomes guilt. Love overcomes worry. 
and I'm Italian, you know that by now, I'm sure. And growing up as a kid, I always joke about this, but it's not just Italians, a lot of us. At the moment of my birth, I was given three things by my parents. Fear, guilt, and worry. I got a PhD in it. And I, a lot of my life I spent worrying now, what do people think? Well, this is how I do I fit in? Even making decisions in our life is just totally amazing, some of the stuff that we do to ourselves. You know, it's amazing how I can have knowledge of something, but putting it into practice is something else. That's where the time comes in and the work comes in. And so I realized over and over again that there's this process we have to go through in life. Now, people say to me, how long will it take? I say one day at a time, a little bit at a time, until about 10 years after you're dead. It's a process. I don't know. I can't answer that question. Each one of us is on our own journey. And our journey is the most important journey on the face of this earth. And we also have to ask ourselves a question. Do I care about myself? Do I take care of my body? You know, I've learned again, if I make time to exercise, if I make time for work, if I make time to relax, if I take time to meditate, I basically am developing my body also. I've learned through my eating disorder programs that I was killing myself with my body. I was putting all kinds of toxic garbage in it. And when I stopped doing that, I made changes in my life, and I'm grateful for that today. My energy got better, my body started to respond better, and my spirituality and my spirit got stronger. And that is the amazing part about it because it's body, mind, and spirit all working together. And so in doing the steps on self-parenting, they talk a lot about allowing the higher parent to teach love and heal the inner child but also to connect with God or your higher power, as you choose to call God, to help you through that process. And I always love the fact that we have to learn something which is so important. See, we have to learn that our history, our life, the things we've been through, all of our experiences, whatever they happen to be, have happened to us, are connected to us, because they are our teachable moments. I have to be able to embrace my history, not run away from it, not hide from it. That's why I love this concept of self-parenting because I'm learning to embrace my history. It's my history, the negative, the positive, whatever happened. And then once I can embrace it, cool. then I can okay, thank you very much. I'm gonna then know. Once I embrace it, then I can actually start the process of healing it. And so I'm going to learn over and over again the value of my history. And I know a lot of us in our history have gone through a lot of craziness of insanity. And I know a lot of times in the course of our journey in life, we've experienced trauma and things of this effect. So we're going to need help doing this. See, embracing your history is healing. It's making peace. It's moving on. And so what I'm learning in the 12 steps of self-parenting is how can I, as an adult, I am the higher parent. If I truly take care of myself, I have the energy to be the higher parent. Then I can actually begin the process of healing that little child, healing my past, healing my history. I can become more open to it. I can learn from it. But I got to be able to Cross the negative out so the positive can come in. And I share this because most of you know one of my most beautiful and great spiritual words, I share it plenty of times, is the word fertilizer. Because fertilizer comes from our crap. We all got it. Congratulations. But if I process my crap, it becomes fertilizer for growth. And so what I have to learn deep down inside is not to be afraid of things that have happened to me, even though I am. So that's why I can't do this by myself. Healing is a process. And what I love so much about the 12 steps of self-parenting 
they have given me another perspective of the steps, another way to look at the journey, and also to be able to realize the fact that this awakening that's going to happen inside of us is I want to be able to develop this higher parent in conjunction with my higher power to give me the strength and the courage to be able to heal the past, to learn from it, to grow from it. Because deep down inside, experiences are our greatest teachers. You know the thing we say in the program, we've heard it plenty of times, experience, strength, and hope. Every experience, if we are able to embrace it and face it, will become a strength for us. We'll learn and grow from it. And then it'll be our hope for the future. Because I really believe that we have these gifts inside of us that we need to share. And so people can pick the energy up inside of us. I've told you this so many times. Two of my favorite people are little children and pets. You know why I love little children and pets? Because they do not hear a word that you say. That's why I love them. They work on energy. They can pick up what's going on inside of you. Isn't that amazing? See, children know when they're loved. And they know when they're being abandoned. And they know the feelings they're going through. Because they feel. And pets are the exact same way. You know, pets know whether you are good or you're not good to them. And so because they can feel your energy. You can say all the things you want to say verbally. But deep down inside, the inner energy is what people are picking up. And I believe this very deeply. I really believe that we can actually speak to people without speaking to the energy coming out of us as people. You know as well as I, you've been around somebody who's always negative. It's almost like when you're around them, all you want to do is run. You've been around somebody who's always positive. You like being around them. You like their energy. You like what's going on. And so we are feeling people. And the beautiful thing about the 12 steps of self-parenting, they take us through a process of getting in touch with our feelings, not to run away from them, and to allow those feelings to become teachable moments for us, learning moments. And you know, you, we try to learn something positive from every negative. And that's a powerful process in life. I, I use the example a lot of times of my mom. My mom gave me this wonderful gift. By the way, when I first found out she gave it to me, I didn't like it. It's called my addictive personality. My mom was a compulsive overeater. She was also a prescription drug addict. My mom basically implanted in me my personality trait, my addictive personality traits. Now, for a long period of time, when I first got in touch with this and began to work on it, I didn't like it. And so what I'm learning over and over again is that it really is a gift. Once I got into recovery, I began to work on myself. I realized the fact that my addictive personality is a gift. So mom, thank you. Now I can say that today. Believe me, in 1984 and 85, I would not have been saying thank you to her. But that's okay. But today, she really was one of my teachers. My father gave me the gift of codependency. Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Fantastic, Mr. Hero, who did everything for everybody. But I loved him. The only problem was he had no life. His life was always doing for others. And I became my dad. I know it. Put myself in a hole so many times. You know, I even joked about this today, but when I was a priest back in Atlantic City, I got to tell you this story. It's a story of a street wino. I don't want to use his name because he's still, he's in, the, he's in recovery today. He's still around, so I don't want to say it publicly. But when I was a, a priest in, in St. Monica's in Atlantic City, uh, we had this gentleman 
who had a problem with that cheap wine. They used to call us Nicky Pete back then, all kinds of crazy, wonderful names. And when he used to get drunk, he used to bring his empty bottles to the, by the rectory and throw them at the rectory. A few bottles came through our windows a few times. And basically, to me, I considered him to be a nuisance. I mean, it made me crazy. One day he came to the back door of the rectory. I answered it. And he said to me, he said, hey, priest. I said, what? He said, get in your car, take me to carrier clinic. I want to sign myself in for the six-month program. I said, you're going to go where? I want to go up there in North Jersey to carrier clinic for the six-month program. Drive me. I said, you'll be there for six months? Get in the car. I take him anywhere to get rid of him for six months. I drove him up there, dropped him off. I figured I'd never see him again. Six months later, the doorbell rang at the rectory. He answered the door. It was him. He took one look at me and he said, hey, priest. He said, you're an idiot. What do you mean I'm an idiot? He said, you're an idiot. See all those drunks? There's drug addicts that come to the back door of the rectory. You give them food. You give them money. You pay for their hotel rooms. You know, I actually went over $60,000 in debt during those years, enabling people. It's fantastic. You know, really thinking I was helping people. It took me years to get out of that debt. And then the crazy part about it was I was driving myself crazy. He said, stop giving them stuff. They come to the back door, you say, I'll take you to treatment, and that's it. I bet you don't get too many visitors anymore. I was getting people 2 o'clock in the morning coming to the back door of the rectory, ringing the doorbell, because the bar had closed, and they wanted a place to sleep. The amazing part about it was I never realized I was such an enabler. Every once in a while, though, I run into this guy. He's in his 90s now. He's in a wheelchair. I run into him every once in a while, and he only does is look at me, and he says, are you still an idiot? And I say, I'm doing better. I'm a half an idiot now. I'm getting there. You know, it's hard sometimes how people like this, I consider them such great teachers. They come into your life at the right time. They carry a message. But, you know, I'm realizing over and over again, you'll see this when we go through the 12 steps. I really believe that these 12 steps connected to self-parenting are finally teaching me that I have the power to heal my past. I have the power to embrace my inner child. But that power won't work unless I am connected to my higher power with prayer and meditation and filling my soul. So today I realized with a lot of gratitude and a lot of love, I can make time every day for my prayer, for my meditation to fill my soul. Only unless I fill my soul can I share and give things to others. Otherwise, I'm an empty barrel. You know, empty barrels that make a lot of noise, but they're empty. And so basically, we have to learn to work on ourselves. So as I take you through the 12 Steps of Self-Parent, I get excited about them, so put up with me, okay? I enjoy them because I really believe in that three-legged stool. When I see the kind of the inner child, the higher parent, and the higher power. So with God, with ourself as someone healthy and positive, we can heal the past, help that little child to become strong, and let that child become our teacher. There are so many beautiful things in life. And yet, you know, sometimes we get so caught up in the outside world. We keep expecting things to happen, you know, when we get all the insanity of politics, all these things. We we get nuts in them. But guess what? That's not where the answers are. The answers are inside of us. We are God's creation. We have a spirit. And that spirit is the key to everything in life. And so when you look in the mirror tonight, realize that you are the architect of your journey. With the help of God, with prayer, with meditation, 
you continue to grow. And I pray every day that I may never stop that process of growing. I hope I learn something new every day. Now I understand my sponsor used to say to me, he used to say, Vince, if you're learning that much today, that's enough. Of course, I'm codependent. I used to joke with him and say, about that much. He used to get my hand and go like this. He said, that much. That's enough. You do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of here. It makes for a full day. So enjoy each day. Do the best you can. Love the people around you. But learn to love yourself, which is the important thing. I want to offer a prayer as we get ready to work, work the steps starting next week. We'll be doing step one next week. And I just want to read step the self-parenting step one. Admitted our powerlessness to change our past, that our, li- that our lives had become unmanageable, and now we became willing to surrender to our love and not to our fear. So we'll talk a lot about step one starting next week. And just every, before I say a closing prayer, I want to m- mention the fact that these 12 steps, I'm going to publish them and we, when we publish our talk tomorrow, uh, they'll be under Vince's corner. So let us pray. God, we come before you as a family. We ask your guidance, we ask your direction. Help us to look within, to realize that you gave us the gift of our spirit, the gift of life. Teach us to honor it. Help us to love ourselves. Help us to celebrate each one of us who we are. Thank you, God, for all the teachers and people you send to our life. Help give us the grace to be open to them, to listen, to realize we're never done, to realize the gift of life that we have deep down inside of each and every one of us. Open our hearts to allow ourselves to take care of ourselves, to have us develop a good sense of spirit and energy inside of us so we can share it with others. Teach us that if we work with you, we grow deep down inside through the gift of our recovery, through the gift of these steps that were given to us. I really believe they were given by you to the early founders that we can grow as a person, become stronger and experience the gift of life, which is a special part of our journey. And so as a family, we come together, we pray and we ask you to bless us and guide us as we continue a journey now, a journey of discovery the beautiful gift of the person and the child that's inside of each and every one of us. For we are your creation and we are your love. Thank you for being our guide, our teacher. Help us to ask for your guidance and direction every day. We pray and we ask this in your name. Amen. And now I'm going to ask you if you would just unmute yourself and we'll we'll close with the serenity prayer. God. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not mine, be done.